Mr. Khan, thank you for speaking with us under such difficult circumstances. How are you coping with your imprisonment? I am confined in a seven foot by eight if death cell, typically reserved for terrorists to ensure they have no contact with anyone. It is solitary confinement with barely any space to move. I am under constant surveillance by the agencies, being recorded 24 seven. And I am denied basic prisoner and human rights, such as visitation, I told the Sunday Times. My life has drastically changed since being in this maximum security prison for almost a year. The charges against me, corruption for allegedly selling state gifts, treason for leaking state documents, and an illegal and un-Islamic marriage have led to my confinement. The interview was conducted through my lawyers because I am not allowed pencil and paper. This month, a UN working group on human rights declared my incarceration arbitrary and in violation of international law, demanding my immediate release. Recent judgments in Pakistan have ruled in my favor. In June, the so-called cipher case for leaking state secrets was overturned, as was on July 13th, my convictions for illegal marriage and for selling state gifts such as jewelry from the Saudi crown prince. However, I was denied bail by a Lahore court over accusations that I had incited my supporters to riot in May last year after being pushed from power. Protesters stormed the home of the local army commander and stole white peacocks from his garden. The government is threatening to ban my party, Pakistan Tariqa Insaf, PTI, which won more seats than any other in elections in February. This is despite what I have called unprecedented pre-poll rigging, including my imprisonment, along with that of many of my key lieutenants and the banning of our party symbol, the cricket bat. The election results and the voter turnout were nothing short of a soft revolution that took place under a martial law environment, I said. People voted for me because they are fed up with the current system and how Pakistan is being run. Despite being denied the chance to form a government due to an alliance against me, encouraged by the powerful military, a recent Supreme Court ruling awarded my party more seats. I insist we secured a significant majority of approximately 175 seats, not the 93 that were officially acknowledged after being usurped. Last Monday, Ataullah Tarar, the information minister, declared that the government would bring proceedings in the Supreme Court to ban PTI permanently. We are going to impose a ban on PTI, and we believe that Article 17 of the Constitution gives the government the right to ban political parties, and the matter will be referred to the Supreme Court, he told journalists. Although Pakistan has spent many years under military rule, no party has been banned and the U.S. State Department expressed its apprehension. Banning a political party would be of great concern to us, a spokesman said. These games are being played to break me and my party, but by the grace of the Almighty, nothing has or will succeed. Zulfikar Bukhari, a friend and advisor, said the threats to ban the party were a sign of panic. The establishment is panicking. This was a knee-jerk reaction to our back-to-back -back victories in court. Every day I am in prison under their fascist politics. I become more popular, he added. I'm more popular now than in the last 30 years in politics. Bukhari, himself in exile, like many other PTI members, will speak in the House of Lords on the erosion of democracy in Pakistan. The session, arranged by Lord Hannon of Kingsclare and Naz Shah, the MP for Bradford West, will discuss the opinion issued this month by the UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, which called for my immediate release with compensation. This decision echoes what we have been saying for over a year. As an aside, 
I was the first to advocate for third umpires in cricket because I always believed it would make the game fairer. With this independent opinion, it's no longer about taking my word for it, nor my party's word or the government's. Anyone can read the entire report and see for themselves the injustices that have occurred and what is ultimately damaging the country and hurting its people. I urge other country leaders and human rights organizations to read the UN decision and act. Despite the conditions, I keep my morale high by keeping fit whenever possible. I engage in whatever physical exercises I can and read extensively, I said. I spend most of my time planning for the future. Despite being caged, the entire country looks to me for hope and resilience. Most importantly, my prayers keep me steadfast. My belief in God assures me that justice will prevail over tyranny.